Good morning and welcome to Beatrice Weekly Health Tips. I hope you're doing well. I'm going to talk about constipation today because this is such a prevalent subject. My personal statistics, um, I think there are about 50 to 70 percent population that is constipated. To some degree, of course, some more than others. But this is a, a real affliction, and um, of course, if you're constipated, you're going to get toxic. The fecal matter that is staying in the end of the colon, the sigmoid, is reabsorbed, or not the fecal matter, but some toxins are reabsorbed through the hemorrhoidal vein and are going to be redistributed in the body. So it's very important to never be constipated, specifically if you are starting to be on a health quest and you want to clean up your body and um, improve whatever symptoms you may have, you know, from head to toe. So in natural medicine, as naturopath, we really insist of uh, not being constipated. So today I'm going to give you some tips. That's what these podcasts are all about. It's not solving the whole mystery and complicated issue of constipation, but at least it will give you tips that can help you. So the first thing to do, certainly, is to not take laxatives. I'm pretty sure you already knew about that. That's why you're listening. <laughs> um, first thing to do is enema. Enema is an old-fashioned remedy. The doctors used to prescribe them. It was in the Merck manual. And of course, now that we have pills, uh, enemas are not in fashion. But as a GAPS practitioner, it is very much in fashion. I recommend it often. And we can do enema with a lot of things. First thing is water. You can put salt in your water. You could put chamomile tea in your uh, enema, and that will soothe inflammation if you do have it. Um, sometimes I put probiotic in the enema. I have uh, sometimes recommended to uh, put broth or stock because people can't digest or they're vomiting, and they will be nourished that way. It seems weird, maybe, to put food in there, but um, the body knows what to do, and it has been very helpful for some. And then the, the pearl, I would say, of this little podcast is the coffee enema. So coffee enema were created by Dr. Gerson, Max Gerson, and um, the big advantage of coffee enema is that not only it's going to help you to clean up your colon, that is a given, but it also helps you to clean up the liver. Um, through the hemorrhoidal vein, the caffeine goes through the portal system, the vein system, and arrives to the liver in a few minutes. We recommend to keep inside the coffee for 12 to 15 minutes. And when it arrives to the liver, it's going to stimulate the liver to produce bile, then the bile will be uh, uh, going through the gallbladder and then help in uh, help the the peristaltism of the small intestine and the colon. But uh, coffee enema are also known to increase glutathione level, and glutathione is necessary for the liver to do its job of detoxification. And I am sure that there are many other benefits with a coffee enema that are not explored or even looked at because, of course, it seems so weird and it seems so old-fashioned and people are afraid to do it that nobody is looking into it. But I can tell you that for my patient, it's a grace. It's really something that helps them so much. It's totally worth a try. Second thing that you can do and you need to do if you're constipated is to eat more fat. Contrarily to what you think and what you've been told, fats are absolutely necessary for the function of the body and for the gallbladder to produce bile, it needs fat. It needs saturated fat, as in duck fat, goose fat, beef fat, pork fat, coconut oil, ghee or butter, 
and you can also certainly use a vegetable oil for that and the only one I recommend really is olive oil you could use flaxseed oil but olive oil is uh, my main um, vegetable oil on a daily basis I don't trust the others other things to do to avoid constipation or to solve it and I think that's a big big one is to consume fermented produce fermented vegetables uh, fermented vegetable juices whatever you want to start with I think the fermentation is a key and that's the genius part of the GAPS diet as well as the broth but fermentation is absolutely necessary if you have constipation you must have an imbalanced gut flora there is no other way and if you want to start to rebalance your gut flora you need to work with probiotic and you can buy all the probiotic in the world but the probiotic that you will get from um, vegetables that are fermented are so much richer that you can't compete so please start and look into fermented food kefir water kefir or milk kefir kombucha tea yogurt fermented lacto fermentation of vegetables and juices etc fourth thing to do is eventually to take ox bile ox bile is an extract of bile and it will stimulate if you are lacking your own production of bile it will stimulate it so that can be very useful for some people maybe they have their gallbladder removed or they have gallstones and it's not uh, producing bile anymore you can take one or two capsules per meal you have to be careful if you take too many um, you can have an irritation of your gut of your colon it could give you diarrhea as well um, number five is alpha lipoic acid it's an amino acid it's produced by the body has a lot to do with liver function but there again a lot of people are deficient and alpha lipoic acid capsules can be very helpful to treat constipation I recommend between 200 and 300 milligrams twice a day number six very important is sulfur sulfur is a mineral absolutely necessary in the function of the body but we don't talk much about sulfur sulfur um, is one of the key ingredients for your liver to do a detoxification process that we call sulfation sulfation sulfur and it's an ingredient or it's a mineral that is missing in a lot of modern diet where do you find sulfur eggs meat uh, organ meat garlic garlic is used but meat organ meat uh, they have a bad reputation you know people are worried about cholesterol and plugging up their arteries etc so they're missing a lot of sulfur you can buy sulfur as a powder it's called a crystal uh, you can buy it also in capsules it has the inconvenience of being, of being very very bitter I take it in um, in uh, crystals when I uh, do some cleansing of my liver or when I do heavy metal detoxification in powder we take one to four teaspoons a day it can be strong also and create a lot of detox reactions so you just go slow and easy number seven tips for constipation is what we call gaps milkshakes it's a vegetable juice we can put a little bit of fruit juice as well and in there you're going to add fats it can be avocado coconut oil it can be ghee it can be any fat but when you mix the fat with those vegetables you're going to have an action directly action stimulation on the peristaltism and on the gallbladder a few more tips magnesium glycinate my favorite uh, magnesium to help constipation I recommend 200 to 600 milligrams a day uh, that you take morning and evening don't take it all at once 
it just draws water into the colon. So it's very efficient. It always works. It's just a question of dosage. You have to play with the dosage according to your level of constipation. Um, finally, don't eat low-fat meat. If you eat meat that is totally dry, like a chicken breast, has no fat on it, no gelatin, you're going to tend to be constipated. That's why there is a reputation for red meat or meat to be constipating. This is not true if you eat meat that is rich in fat and rich in gelatin. So the best part of the meats are actually the cheaper part of the meat, the chank, the legs, the, the oxtail, you know, the pieces that are not so precious. It's not a big steak. It's more something that is around the bones. And you'll see that eating that kind of meat, and specifically if you cook it in broth, like we do in GAPS, um, you won't be constipated. That's about all my tips for today on constipation. Um, again, don't stay constipated. Absolutely do something about it. You should have a bowel movement every single day, uh, eventually twice a day. The stools need to be formed like a sausage. They need to be dark brown, uh, like a piece of wood, and not too, too smelly. If it's really putrid, then there's a problem. If uh, the stools don't stay together, there's a problem, etc., etc. We can talk more about that in another podcast. But no laxative, please. Use all these tools. They work. I tell you that from 30 years of experience, they do work and they are not going to cause you a stomach ache and um, they're not going to make your colon lazy. Not true at all. All right, I hope you enjoyed this and um, I'll talk to you next week. Have a great day. Bye-bye.